to 16 and 17. I mean, Psalms 147 and 3 tells us he healed the broken in heart, the broken in heart, and binded up their wounds. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Psalms 51, starting with verse number 16. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in the burnt offering. Verse 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, and a broken and contrite heart. Man, I want to teach, preach, preach. <laughs> However, it comes across this morning on being broken. Hallelujah. Or brokenness. You must not got my other little slide up about me. There we go. Brokenness. And uh, let's lift our hands, ask the Lord to help us today. Lord, we thank you one more time for this opportunity to be in your presence, God. Lord, I'm your servant today. Open our hearts, open our ears, God, open our minds, God. Let us receive what it is that you have for us today. Lord, I pray, Lord, break us today. Break us today for your kingdom. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for everything that you do in our lives. I thank you, Lord, for being there for us every day. In the good, when we're on the mountains, when we're in the valleys. Lord, you're still the same God that we can turn to in every situation of our life, God. Lord, we give you all the praise and the honor. And everybody say amen. And you may be seated. But brokenness or being broken. Brokenness in God's eyes is being so crushed by the sin and darkness of this world that we recognize that there is no other place to turn to but God. There's no nobody else we can turn to when we feel broken but to God. Some people in the day and hour that we live in, they'll turn to the bottle They'll turn to the drugs. Oh, God. They'll turn Jesus. to other things that are out there. Amen. When they feel broken because for a, a moment, for a few spaces of time, that seems to do something. And it, it sugarcoats the problem. Amen. But to really be broken is when God really can crush us. And God can really get down on the darkest, deepest part of our lives and of our heart. And then we realize, you know what, God? I've tried everything else out there. I've turned every other direction out there. Amen. Amen. And the only thing I know to do is when I'm broken, God, is I need to turn to you. I need to turn to your presence, turn to your house, turn to the things of you. Amen. Because when we're really broken, amen, that's when God can help us the most. Because a lot of times that when somebody's at the lowest, the more apt to listen to what somebody has to say. The more apt to hear the voice of God when they're broken. They're apt to hear more of the things of God when they're broken. Yeah. Amen. Because they turned everywhere else and had not been able to do anything. And it wasn't, nothing was very good for them at that time. Amen. But when you're broken, when you allow God to really break the will, your will, you really allow God to break your way. You really allow God to break the things that you think you want done. Amen. That's when we're ready to be a willing vessel for God. That's when we can say, God, use me. Do to me whatever it is that you have to do for me. Amen. Everybody in here, in some aspects, in the natural or spiritual, has known brokenness. 
brokenness. No one makes it through life without avoiding it. Nobody here can go through life without feeling some kind of brokenness. Nobody in this place is exempt from being broken, yeah. exempt from being having a heavy heart, exempt from oh, things God. of this world, exempt from things around us. It just nobody around here is like that. I mean, I've, we've broken pencils and we've had broken promises and some have had broken bones and some even may have had some broken friendships and broken dreams and a broken heart. Yeah. And we've even felt when fevers have broken right. after racking our body with shivers, but the sense of my wheel breaking after long eternal structures her tension and few silence broken with soft and gentle or loud or angry voices. You see, there's a whole lot of ways to be broken. Yeah. And from our souls to our fingertips, brokenness is woven throughout all of human experience. And if anything involves us intimately, God has a lot to say about it. The meaning of brokenness in the Bible could be fleshed out into books upon books. Scriptures is brimming with themes of broken people. Scriptures are there about broken situation and broken hearts, and most importantly, a broken Savior. Amen. But there are different aspects about being broken. There's different things. Number one is the nature of brokenness. Broken means to be utterly destroyed, crushed, or smashed. This is what God wants to happen to our own flesh, yeah. wants to happen to our own spirit. Being broken is contrary to our very nature. We think everything needs to be repaired or everything needs to be restored to its original condition. But God doesn't desire to sustain the light that we were born with. God is a not is not a repair man, but he is an engineer and a creator. Yes. God wants to build something new in our lives. Uh, and then God wants to take our hearts, maybe that's so hardened. And God wants to yes. take a heart that's maybe so bitter or so involved in everything else that's not like him. Amen. And he wants to be the chief engineer saying, I just don't want to repair your broken heart. And I just don't want to repair your broken spirit. Amen. But I want to engineer something within your life that when you are broken, that you understand that there's no other way to turn. That there's no other place to turn to. Amen. But the nature of brokenness is allowing God to be the engineer of what it is that we are facing. Amen. Amen. There's times in your walk with God, and there's been times in my walk with God, amen, that God has had to break us. Yeah. God had to, had to break our prideful spirit and our prideful nature yeah. and had to break uh, the, the, our desires of God, I really want to do this. And God said, no, that's not what you need to do because it's going to take you down an avenue that you really don't want to go. Oh, Amen. But he just doesn't want to fix the problem. Yes. He just doesn't want to restore you to, to who you used to be. Yeah. Amen. But what he really wants to do is to totally change your world. Hallelujah. He wants to totally change your attitude. He wants to totally change your atmosphere. Yes. He wants to totally change everything that you used to be. Amen. Amen. Because before Christ, some of you were alcoholics and some of you were the people that was depressed and oppressed. Yeah. Before God, you were something that you was broken and you gave in to every flesh and desire and everything that was of the world and everything that was out there. He just doesn't want to restore you back to who you used to be. But when you're baptized in Jesus' name, when you're filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you are a new creature. He becomes an engineer that totally changes. Totally changes who we are. Totally changes what we need to be. Man, before some of you got into the got into the church, 
There were things and ambitions that you had in your life that you wanted to do. Places that you wanted to go and, and things that, that, that you had a desire to do. But whenever God got a hold of your heart and started creating a new heart with inside of you, uh, he changed those desires. Yes, thank He changes from a worldly desire to a heavenly desire. Yeah. Amen. Because the nature of brokenness simply means God destroyed what I want myself to be. Totally crush my will. Totally crush, crush my ways. Totally crush who it is that I am called. And let me come out to be something yes. that you want me to be. Yeah. Yeah. Let me be who it is that you would have me to be. Yes. And you asked me five years ago, I would have told you, you're crazy. I don't want to ever pastor. You told me, I, I looked at it, it has been, this month was uh, this time of the year, was eight years ago, we went on a first mission trip. And uh, you would have told me back then that I was going to spend several years, the next few years on a foreign bill. I would have told you, you're crazy. <laughs> I would have told you, uh, and I told my wife when we first got married, God's going to have to come down right beside me and tell me to go because I'm not leaving the USA. <laughs> I mean, that was my desire. That was my will. Amen. But God, it took several years. Amen. But God said, listen, I've got other plans for you. And some of you have been praying for things for a long time, but you haven't allowed God to really break you. You, 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 you speak the words, God, I want to do this for you. I really want to do that. God, I really want to do this. And I really, I, I've got the plans to do this, God. And then God says, okay, let's do it. And you're like, no, God, it's just not the right time. I, I, let, let me go and do this first. And this is just me, but that's not being totally broken to God's will. We, we're, we're selfish sometimes. By human nature, we're selfish. Because, God, I really want to do this for you. But... Let me do this first. Amen. You may not have another opportunity to do what it is that God would have you to do. The nature of brokenness is willing enough to say, God, break me. Break this vessel. Break this heart. Break this desire. Break everything that's on the inside of me that's not of you. Amen. The reason... For brokenness. God breaks us so that we can re he can re-engineer us into something that works. He has, a, he has a life only he can give us and it will only be birthed in us through brokenness. God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the mighty. You can read that in 1 Corinthians 1 and 26 and 27. God does his best work among the broken in order for his spirit, in order for the Holy Ghost, if I may say, to flow through us, we must be broken down. We must realize that we have nothing to offer and he need, and need him to change us. God is looking for people who come to him in brokenness, as it says in Isaiah 66 and verse number 2. Amen. The reason that we need to be broken is so God can do something through us that nobody else can do. That, that God is able to use us how we have never been used before. Amen. To really be broken is allowing his spirit, allowing himself, amen, the Holy Ghost to come and live inside of a heart that's so bitter and so messed up and has questions and, and, and broken. Amen. And it's something about when and we've all seen it on people when they're seeking the Holy Ghost and they're they're seeking for God to do something in their lives and, and, and you see them beforehand and, and the tears are flowing of, of agony and pain and, and, and disappointment and discouragement and they come into the atmosphere and they finally are able to lift their hand and say God break this heart and within all the 
sudden they start start speaking with a heavenly language, uh, and we've seen it. Amen. The whole continent, or count, count, countenance, not continents, their whole countenance change. Amen. You see a glow that comes over them. And what that glow is of them saying, God, the reason that I am here today is because I've got to be broken. And the only way that I can be broken is if you break me. Is if you break me, Lord. Amen. And it doesn't matter if you're just getting into church or if you don't know anything about church or if you've been in church your whole life. You need the Holy Ghost to break every single day of your life. You need God to break your will every day that you live. Jesus. Man, because if you don't, the whole reason of being break, broken would just become a past thing in our lives. Man, the next thing is brokenness is powerful. Brokenness is powerful. When the world's thinking brokenness is weak, but in God's kingdom, it is the exact opposite of the heaven, earthly kingdom. To God, brokenness is powerful. Paul talked about how God gave him a thorn in the flesh and wouldn't take it away. But however, he decided the glory in his infirmity as his strength would be made perfect in weakness. Yeah. Second Corinthians 12 verses 8 and 9 talks about that, 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 that passage of scripture. Amen. Paul decided, you know what? I have a thorn in my flesh. I have something that I've got to live with. I've got something that I've got to deal with every day. Everybody in here, at some point in time, your past will haunt you. Yeah. Things that you've done will haunt you. Past failures will haunt you. Past nightmares will come back and haunt you. They'll come back and try to destroy what it is that God is doing in your life and try to destroy yeah. God's will in your life. And Paul said, you know what? God, you gave me this thorn in my flesh. Amen. But he decided I'm going to give you glory in any way through the infirmities that I have because your strength would be much more, would be made perfect in my, in my <clears throat> weakness. Yeah. Yeah. God's strength is better than our weakness. Yeah. Yeah. God's strength is better than than anything that we can try to do on our own. We, we, there's times that we say, I can do this all by myself. I don't need anybody's help. I don't need anybody to help me with this. I'm strong enough. I can do it on my own. Amen. I mean, you go ahead and try. You try working that out, that problem out on your own without taking it to God in prayer. You may have a breakthrough maybe for just a moment, amen. But let me tell you, that problem is still going to exist. But when we really say, God, you break this desire. Yeah. You break this infirmity that I have. Yeah. You break it because, God, your strength is a whole lot better than anything that I can do. Right. Yeah. It's sad the day and hour that we live in. Amen. People who's lived for God all of their lives, people who has done so much, then they, they get to the place, they say, you know what? I, I, I just don't need that as much as I used to. I, 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 don't, I don't need all of that of God. I don't need all of this in my life. And for a moment, everything seems okay. But when that first wall hits, And they get broken in the natural. The first place they're going to turn to is God. The first place they're going to turn to is the house of God. And I'm thankful that we are able to do that. Because that's what this place is. It's the hospital, as I said a few weeks ago, for the broken to come into this place to where the chief engineer can totally change their lives. Amen. But being broken is powerful. Amen. I remember the times 
of, of being in prayer and the times of saying, God, I need your perfect direction. I need exactly what is it that I, I need to do. Where, what, what do you want to do through me? What do you want to do with me? Man, and it was it was in those time of prayer of, of really blocking out everything else. Everybody in here needs to have a prayer time in their life. Yeah. That they block out everybody around them. Yes, they block or they break out, broke, they block out every problem that they have for oh, just a moment. You don't have to go two or three hours to do it because just hey, but the way life is today in the business, man, if you can pray two or three hours at a time, hey man, I'm happy for you. Hey right. man, but a lot of people can't do that. Yeah. Hey man, but we've got to find a place. Yeah. And sooner or later, five minutes will turn into 10 minutes. Yeah. And yeah. 10 minutes will turn yeah. into 30 minutes. Yeah. And 30 yeah. minutes will turn into 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then for some, that 45 minutes will turn into an hour. Amen. Because the reason that is, they decided, God, I'm breaking to, so you can break me. I'm breaking away from the hustle and the bustle of life. And I'm breaking away from the cares of life. Yeah. And it becomes yeah. easier. They say if somebody does something 21 days in a row, it becomes a habit. Statistically, back in the day, I don't even know, statistics may have changed now. But if you do something on a regular basis, it becomes an everyday part of your life. And there are those days that you, you know, man, I can't do my day without doing this. Right. It becomes yeah. something that we say, I've got to do this today. And if we miss doing it, we feel like our day is totally messed up. Yeah. Anybody ever have those things? You do the same thing every day. Certain things. And if you miss that thing that day, your whole day just seems, man, it just don't feel right today. It's the same way of being broken in prayer with God. Because it's something that is powerful. It is a powerful connection that you get between you and him. Amen. It's a conversation that you have between yourself and God. And then when God really sees that you're ready to be broken, he changes things in our life. Man, like Jesus, we must experience brokenness to have his presence and power in our life. Brokenness at an altar will usher his presence into any circumstance. Our weakness is an opportunity for the Holy Ghost to rest upon us and the power of God to flow through us. Hallelujah. And brokenness, the next point in goes against all the grains of everything, but brokenness is productive. Yes. Brokenness is productive. Broken produces in us what success can never bring. We are able to grow more in God when things are rough, when things aren't going well, when things are going well. We are blessed when we are broken. Matthew 5 and 3, Jesus came to preach good tidings to the meek, bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, and open the prison to those who are bound. God has come to preach good tidings to the meek. Brokenness will make you meek. Brokenness will bind I'm on phones, Daniel. Brokenness will bind up the brokenhearted. It helps proclaim liberty to the captive. We shouldn't think it's strange when trials come into our lives, but instead rejoice. When things are going wrong, we need to start looking for the things that are right. All things, even bad things, work together for the good. Yeah. Romans, 8 and, Romans 8 and 28 tells us, that pull up that scripture. That's my one of my favorite scriptures. It just slipped my mind. All things work together for the good to them that what love God and who are called according to 
his purpose. Not our purpose. Not our ones. But good things work out. Bad things work out. Pull that back up there for me real quick. Brokenness works out. Brokenness becomes so productive in our life when we can really live this scripture. That we say, God, everything's not good right now, but I know everything's going to be all right. Or God, man, everything's great right this moment, so I know everything's going to work out. I was speaking to a pastor friend of mine this morning, and he asked me, is broken and, how is it he put it, broken and being broken, is it the same, mean the same thing? And I say broken is a state of mind, but being broken is something that has to happen to an individual. Being broken means that you're allowing God to break you. But some people, their whole state of mind and whole state of thing is everything's broke all the time. Everything's bad all the time. Nothing good can come out of my life. Nothing good. It, 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 it's what we call the negative Nancys. Or, or, or whatever else that you call them. It's those people that you get around and everything's doom and gloom. That when you're done talking with them, you feel a whole lot worse than it was when you started having a conversation with them because you feel the broken that they have. But being broken is simply saying, God, I know that some days are good, some days are bad, but I just want you to break me. I'm willing for you to break me because I know that all things are going to work together because, God, I love you. And I'm called to your purpose. God needs to break our fleshly desires. God needs to break our fleshly wants. God needs to break our fleshly attitudes. Amen? Scripture tells us that we are not of this world. We are just in this world. We have to go about every day living in the world that we live in. We didn't ask for all the craziness that's happening in the world right now. Nobody in here would want that craziness. Amen. But we're living through it. And I believe that God's trying to get the attention of the church that says, hey, I'm going to break you down. I'm going to humble you. I'm going to really see that where the rubber meets the road, that you really have a desire to live for me. That you really have a desire to do the things that I need you to do. Amen. And also, brokenness brings life. Being broken will bring a new life to you that you never expected to happen. Brokenness also means a breakthrough or to bring to a place of birth. When God breaks us, he desires to birth his glory in us. Scripture tells us that unless a corn of wheat dies, it will abide alone. We must die so that we can bring forth fruit. John 12 and 24. Out of death and brokenness, something will be born. And when it talks about that a corn of wheat has to die, or it's going to abide alone. We must abide at, we must die out to flesh if we want to produce fruit. We must die out to our desires if we want to be fruitful. I I taught a message maybe last year or the year before about the chosen fruit or something like that. I can't remember exactly. Man, we need the fruits of the Spirit. Joy, love, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, 
and all the rest of them that might just slip my mind. Amen. But we've got to say, God, I want to die out to my will. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to die out to my way. I mean, if you really want to live the life that God has for you to live, you've got to die. I know that sounds crazy, but you've got to die out to everything that you desire. When people say, well, you guys are so restrictive in what you can do, what you can't do. You're so, you're so bound down and you're cultish and you're this and you're that. I, I don't see it that way. I can do whatever I want. I can live however I want to live. Hallelujah. But I made up in my mind yeah. that God, you're going to break the fleshly desires of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Some of you were messed up yeah. before God. Some of you was in false religion before God. Some of you were bound by drugs before God. And, and it, it blows my mind, Brother Jason, how somebody that God can totally change their life come into church and God changes everything. And because they didn't want to be totally broken. They fall back yeah. into what God delivered them from. My, my, my. It breaks your heart when you have the loved ones that used to live it. Now, because they didn't allow God to totally break them. They're missing out on a full life, new life in Him. Sometimes being broken means that we have to put, be put back on the potter's wheel. As it talks about in Jeremiah, we pull Jeremiah 18, starting with verse, I didn't give you, give you these scriptures. Jeremiah 18, starting with verse number one. I believe I believe that's it. The word of the Lord came, the, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, verse 2, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. And I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. Hold it right there for just a second. I, uh, this morning I was sitting in there, and uh and I didn't copy it all down. I mean, but I looked up how, well, how was it? How to make clay soft again. Hard, hard clay. How can you, hard clay be softened again? How, how can it be, be, be brought back into the molding stage so it can be made into something else and the very first thing that it talked about was it has to go through a heating process that you can heat up hard clay and as it heats up it becomes back to a molding element that you're able to mold it through applying some heat to it and one of the things says put it on top of a heating pad um, but there's times that we get hard. He's the potter. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the clay. Yeah. And brokenness is good to have because when it's broken, the potter needs to mend it back together. And if it takes a fiery furnace right. yeah. to get us melted down to where God can do something in our lives, if things have to be heated up in our lives, yeah. God, I'm willing to let you do it. Yes, Lord. yes Jesus. Right. And the number two thing that you can put on hard clay is baby oil or oils. Yeah. And 
whatever it is in the oils that makes it slippery again to where it gets down into the heat of your hands around it to where it will be able to be molded again. There comes times in a child of God's life Did you feel bitter? Scripture tells us, call on the elders of the church. Yes. Let them anoint you. Yes. Why do we anoint prayer cloths? Because it works. Yeah. Why do people come up and get anointed? I mean, because the oil Hallelujah. is able to soften this clay. Amen. And then the last thing I saw, and, I, and, and I'm trying to figure out, it says you put it in a food processor. Yeah. I'm like, how is it that you can put something hard in a food processor? The only thing that I can figure out is because it breaks down the whole element. It breaks up that hard clay. Breaks up the hardness of a heart. Sometimes we got to say, God, you need to just come in yes. and put me through the blender. Yes. 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 Put me through the blender, God, yes. of your will. You, you come and destroy my life. You know, there's some people, something bad has to happen to them for God to get their attention. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And sometimes I've heard I've heard preachers tell their saints and pastors tell their people, you really want to be broken? I'm going to pray that something happens to you that gets you back to the altar. Heaven forbid if it has to get to that place for somebody. But if God has to put me through that process of breaking me down to the lowest points, everything that I thought, I, I thought I had it all together. I thought I was living it all together and God puts us through that process yeah. and just starts spinning our world and, and just starts breaking us down and tearing pieces off of it. When we get to that place, it says he went down to the potter's house and behold, he wrought a work or wrought the work on the wheels. Verse four. And the vessel that was made of clay was marred in the hands of of the potter. So he made it again another vessel. When we are broken, God can start molding us again. Tear off the, the ugly pieces. Tear off the parts of the clay that don't need to be there and let him get you back on the wheel. On a potter's wheel, so he made it again another vessel that seemed good in the potter to make it. Verse 5. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot not do with you as this potter, saith the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. You stop right there. He asked him, can I not do with you as the potter is done with this clay? Will you allow me to be broken? Will you allow me to break you? Will you allow me to take things out of your life that don't need to be there? Are you willing enough to let brokenness to be part of your life? Are you willing enough to let brokenness become a process in your life so it can become, so, so your life can be productive? Are you willing enough to allow, you really want God to do something in your life? You've got to be willing to be broken. Amen. You've got to be willing for God to do whatever it is that he needs to do. To break you. Are you willing enough? You really want more of God in your life. Hallelujah. Are you you really are you really willing enough to say, God, you use me? 
You want your life to be different? You want your family to be changed? Hallelujah. You want your job place to be different? You want everything about you to be different? You've got to be willing enough to say, God, I want to be broken. I want you to break me. I want you to do to me whatever it is that you've got to do to me. If you have to put me back on the potter's wheel, so be it. If you have to turn up the heat of my life, so be it. Amen. If I've got to get prayed for every service that I come, so be it. If you have to put me through the food processor on the altar, so be it. So be it, God. Because I need this wheel broken. I need this flesh broken. I need this desire broken. I need everything that I think that needs to be done. How I think it needs to be done. How I want it to be done. God, you've got to break it. Yes, Lord. God has created each of us in a way that he wants us. It is our responsibility to take what he has given us and use it for his glory and his pleasure. In doing so, we find out ultimate fulfillment rather than lives with disappointment and dissatisfaction. With God has with what God has or has not given us. We can choose to thank him in everything. That's Ephesians 5 and 20, Colossians 3 and 15. Just as the clay finds it the highest purpose when it becomes pliable in the hand of the potter. Going back to Psalms 51 and verse number 17. Let's stand. Psalms 51 and 17. The sacrifices of God. It's a sacrifice. It'll be a sacrifice for you to let God. You have to sacrifice your will. You have to sacrifice your wants. You have to sacrifice your desires. But the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. God, break my spirit. Break my spirit. Hallelujah. In a broken and contrite heart. Break it, God. Hallelujah. I'm bitter against this situation. I have bitterness because this happened in my life. Life hasn't been good to me. Life has thrown me curveballs. Life has brought this to me. Life has brought that to me. But God, I'm willing. I'm willing. I'm willing for you to break this heart. I'm willing for you to break this spirit. I'm willing, God. Break me. Break me. Because when we let Him break us, then He can mold us and make us into what it is that we need to be. No, nobody's perfect. And you'll have those days. But when one of them days hits you, you can go to God in prayer and God can break it. Amen. Let's lift our hands and love you.